Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing fine today. Our topic for this day is how to design a steel purlin. But before that, please subscribe to this channel, we would appreciate it a lot. And it would really help the channel. First and foremost, all given datas are as follows. The spacing between trusses is 3 meters. The spacing of purlins is 0.6 meter. The height of the building is 7.41 meters, the width is 16 meters, and the length is 32 meters. The roof angle, tetha is equals to 10 degrees. And we will be using steel grade 36 KSI, or 248 Newton per square millimeter as the steel yield strength FY. Assuming that we have a sag rod installed at the mid-span. And we will consider the following loadings. For the dead load, we have a total of 1 kN per square meter, considering the roof sheet, insulation, connections and the self-weight of the purlin. For the roof live load, considering the table 205-3 of the minimum roof live loads. And the roof live load would be equal to 0.75 kN per square meter. For the wind load, there are several ways on how to calculate for the wind pressures. You may calculate the wind pressure, P by following the conventional way, wherein the wind pressure, P, is equals to the velocity pressure, evaluated at mean roof height, Q sub H, times, close and open, external pressure coefficient, GC sub P, minus, the internal pressure coefficient, GC sub PI, and that is for the buildings with the mean roof height equals to less than 18 meters, or classified as low-rise buildings, where, the velocity pressure, Q sub H, is equals to 0.613 times the velocity pressure exposure coefficient k sub z times the topographic factor k sub zt times wind directionality factor k sub d times square of the basic wind speed and you may also calculate the wind pressures using the stod pro wind load calculator which is the easiest way and the one we will be using for this design I assume you have Stod Pro Connect already installed in your computer. To calculate for the wind pressures using the Stod Pro Connect, first, open a new file. Then go to the Loading tab. Then click the drop down or plus sign beside the Definitions button. Then click the Wind Definitions. Click Add. Then Add again. And then Close. Click the Type 1, Wind 1, and then click Add once again. After that, calculate as per ASCE-7, then fill in all data required. Choose AS-7-2010. Building classification category is category 2 for all buildings and other structures except those listed in risk categories 1, 2, and 4. But you can also check which category is applicable for your building using the ASCE manual. And then input the basic wind speed which is 290 km per hour. And take note. That this might be different depending on your location. And then exposure category is B for urban or suburban areas, wooded areas, or other terrain with numerous closely spaced obstructions, having size of single family dwellings or larger. Again, you can also check which category is applicable for your building. Then structure type is building structures. Consider wind speed up over hills or escarpment, choose no, then click apply. Then next is the main building data. The building height is 7.41 meters. Building length along the direction of the wind is 16 meters. And building length normal to the direction of the wind is 32 meters. Building frequency is 2. Damping ratio is 0.01. Enclosure classification is enclosed building. Then click apply. For building design pressure, click wind ward. If you want to get the value of wind ward pressure and click leeward, if you want leeward wind pressure. Then click apply, then OK. Scroll down to the bottom. And you can now get the wind ward pressure which is equals to 1.9 kN per square meter. And then repeat the process, and you will get the leeward pressure which would be 1.34 kN per square meter. Since, we have all the parameters and datas we need, we will now begin with the design. The first step is to assume for the initial section, rule of thumb says, that the depth of purlin may be taken from length of the purlin, which is equals to 3 meters, divided by 32, that gives us 94 millimeters. 
but for this design we will try 100 mm as initial depth of the steel purlin. We will try LC 100 mm by 50 mm by 15 mm by 2 mm with section properties as follows. Weight is equals to 3.35 kg per meter. Area is equals to 427 square millimeters. Moment of inertia along X is equals to 675,000 millimeters to the power of 4. Section modulus along X is equals to 13,500 cubic millimeters. Moment of inertia along Y is equals to 145,000 millimeters to the power of 4. Section modulus along Y is equals to 4,400 cubic millimeters. And these properties can be found in ASEPT steel sections. The second step is to calculate for the normal and tangential load per linear meter. For the normal load per linear meter, due to dead load, we have 1 kN per square meter times the spacing of the Perlin 0.6 meter times cosine of 10 degrees times 1000. This gives us a value of 591 newton per meter. Take note that the projection of the, the dead load and roof lie of load is along the global y-axis. And the normal load per linear meter, due to roof live load, is equals to 0.75 kN per square meter times 0.6 meter times cosine of 10 degrees times 1000, that gives us a value of 443 N per meter. And the normal load per linear meter, due to wind load, we have positive wind pressure for the wind ward and negative for the leeward. And take note that the projection of the wind load is parallel to the local y direction. For the positive wind pressure, we have 1.9 kN per square meter times 0.6 meter times 1000, and that gives us a value of 1140 N per meter. And for the negative wind pressure, we have 1.34 kN per square meter times 0.6 meter times 1000, and that gives us a value of 804 N per meter. Moving on to the tangential load per linear meter. For the dead load, we have 1 kN per square meter times the spacing of the Perlin 0.6 meter times sine of 10 degrees times 1000. So, we have a value of 104 N per meter. And the tangential load per linear meter due to roof lie of load is equals to 0.75 kN per square meter times 0.6 meter times sine of 10 degrees times 1000. That gives us a value of 78 N per meter. And the third step is to determine the governing normal and tangential load per linear meter using the basic load combination for allowable strength design. Our first load combination is dead load plus roof live load. Second is dead load plus 0.6 of the wind load 1, and the last one is dead load plus 0.6 of the wind load 2. And these are the corresponding value under normal and tangential load per linear meter. Now, the governing normal load per linear meter is equals to 1275 newton per meter, and the governing tangential load load per linear meter is equals to 182 newton per meter. The fourth step is to calculate for the bending stresses along x and y direction. For the actual bending stress along x direction, we have Fbx equals to the moment along x axis, mx, divided by the section modulus, sx where the moment is equals to the normal load per linear meter times square of the length divided by 8. And this gives us a value of 1434.4 newton meter. Therefore the value of actual bending stress along x is equals to 1434.4 times 1000 divided by the section modulus and the result is 106.25 newton per square millimeters. For the actual bending stress along y direction, we have Fby equals to the moment along y axis, my, divided by the section modulus, sy, where the moment is equals to the tangential load per linear meter times square of the length, divided by 32. And this will give us a value of 51.19 newton meter. Reminders that we use WL squared, divided by 32, since sag rod is at the mid span.
but in the case where there are no sag rods, the formula of moment is WL squared divided by 8, and if sag rods are installed at the middle third, the moment is equals to WL squared divided by 90. Now the value of the actual bending stress along Y is equals to 51.19 times 1000 divided by the section modulus, and the result is 11.63 newton per square millimeters. For the allowable bending stresses, FBX and FBY. First, we have to determine if the section is a compact section or non-compact section, using the equation. Width, B, divided by 2 times the thickness of flange is less than or equal to 170 over square root of steel yield strength. And since it doesn't satisfy the equation, the section is not under the compact section. We will try to compare if width, B, divided by 2 times the thickness of flange is less than or equal to 250 over square root of steel yield strength. And since it satisfies the equation, the section is non-compact. And therefore, the value of the allowable bending stress in X and Y directions is 0.6 times the steel yield strength, Fy, which gives us a value of 148.8 newton per square millimeters. Take note that the allowable yield strength for compact section is 0.66 times the steel yield strength, Fy, and 0.6 times Fy for non-compact section. The fifth step is to calculate for the interaction of flexural stress using the equation. Absolute value of the sum of the actual bending stresses divided by the allowable bending stresses at both directions, and this should be less than or equal to 1. Substituting all values, we have 106.25 divided by 148.8 plus 11.63 divided by 148.8 which gives us a value of 0.79. And since the value of interaction of flexural stress is equals to 0.79, which is less than 1. Therefore, it is safe to use the LC 100 mm by 50 mm by 15 mm by 2 mm with sag rods at the midspan.